It is Monday, August 31st, and tomorrow is day one of my 30 paintings in 30 days challenge. So I have this pattern of in August, and I'm sure that some of you can relate to this, in August my motivation just tanks. I'm not nearly as productive as I would like to be, and I'm just lacking that flame that usually drives me. So I'm looking to reignite that. In the August of 2017, I noticed how I was feeling, and I said I just need something to snap myself out of this. And starting September 1st, I was like, I'm just gonna paint 30 paintings in 30 days. It rekindled my love for creating and just, it worked wonders on my mental health. On top of that challenge, I also cut out social media and screen time, any, any screen time really. I didn't mindlessly scroll on Instagram. I didn't watch YouTube or Netflix or any of that stuff. And so in 2018, I just did the same exact thing because I was feeling the same way in August. Sure enough, I came out of that month with 30 new pieces of art and a renewed vigor for life and creation and it was great. 2019, I decided, yeah, I'll do the 30 paintings in 30 days, but there's no need to cut out social media or do any of that. And I fizzled out of the challenge five days in. And instead of pinpointing the problem and recognizing like, oh, you didn't cut out the social media or the screen time, so that's why you're not as into it this year. I just shrugged and was like, I'm just not as into it this year. I guess, I guess the 30 paintings in 30 days isn't happening, and it didn't. So we're back at it, 2020, 30 paintings in 30 days. I am also deleting social media apps off of my phone. I'm not gonna be watching anything. The only consumption I'll be doing will be through audiobooks and podcasts. And I also think this is a great time to stack on some other things that will allow me to achieve this kind of hard reset for the year. Along with cutting out screen time, I also am just not going to be purchasing junk food or alcohol. I'm going to meditate or journal every day and I'm also going to move in some capacity every day, whether it's five minutes of yoga or just going for a walk around my neighborhood. And then the last thing is I want to create more space, both physically and mentally. Physically, I just have a lot of stuff in my apartment. Most of it is old artwork that I either need to paint over or get rid of. And so I've decided that every day I'm going to physically take one item from inside my house, outside of my house. I think by creating more physical space in my apartment, it will free up a lot of mental space and mental clarity. Very excited for that as well. September has always been just a very refreshing, hard reset month for me. That could be because it's my birthday month and I do get pretty weird about birthdays. I think about my own mortality a lot. Not that I'm scared of dying necessarily, I just, you know, life is precious and I want to be spending as much of my time here in a meaningful way. I know what fuels me in this life and so I'm just going to be leaning super, super hard into those things this month. We'll see what comes out of it. One of my favorite things about this challenge is it allows me the opportunity every single day to show up and decide on one specific thing that I'd like to work on within my painting abilities. Because I never had real formal art training, a lot of what I know is self-taught. Sometimes that was YouTube and books and podcasts, but Mostly growing up, it was putting in hours and hours of painting and drawing. I just learned by doing. Most of the drawings and paintings I made were scenes out of my own head. It wasn't until I was a little bit older that I started to use reference photos and started to learn more about scale and proportion. 
Now when I work on pieces, I use a combination of reference photos and scenes from my own head. Working with reference photos is usually pretty humbling. It has taught me so much about how my eye works in relation to my brain, and really that's one of the foundational elements of my painting process. When I'm working with a reference photo, I have to consistently remind myself to paint what I see and not what I think. What I mean by that is if I'm painting a bowl of fruit, for example, and there's an apple in that bowl, my brain understands the apple to be red. When my eye is able to pick up, well, oh, actually there's really just a small splotch of red by the highlight of the apple. And really what my eye is seeing is deeper tones of, of purple or maybe muted pinks. And so when I kind of am able to shut my brain up and, and focus on what my eye is actually seeing, that is when my best work happens, when I paint what I see and not what I think. Spirit of my silence, I can hear you, but I'm afraid to be near you, and I don't know where to begin, and I don't know where to begin. Somewhere in the desert, there's a forest. Whenever I am creating a piece from my own head, if I want it to have a sense of realism, then it's up to me to apply what I actually know about the real world into this fictional image. So I have to consider the light source and how that affects the shadows on the ground and on different surfaces and how the light is moving throughout the image and whether there's a warm tone or cool tone and how the clouds affect that and depending on the degree of realism that I'm going for more and more factors get added on it's really just about balance I mean there's no real right or wrong way to go about painting but because I don't have any serious formal art training I really like to challenge myself with some of these exercises and I like to put constraints around my creative process at times because that's when that's when I've observed that I've learned the most and improved the most. This is the first year that I haven't entered 30 and 30 with a solid theme of any kind. Um, the first year I did it, I painted a lot of mountains. The second year was full of seascapes. And this year, I've kind of just been going with the flow. I don't really know what I'm going to paint until I sit down in front of my easel at the end of the day. But so far, so good. That's been, that's been working for me. So it's September 30th. <laughs> Let's review, shall we? So at the beginning of the month, I set out to do 30 paintings in 30 days, do 30 consecutive days of movement, clear out one item from my house every single day, go 30 days without purchasing alcohol or junk food, and go 30 days without being on social media or watching any sort of screen. I actually kept a record of this on the whiteboard in my dining room. And there are a couple of really surprising results. So starting out with the challenge itself, the 30 paintings in 30 days. This was the first year that I actually completed it in the way that it was meant to be done. In years past, I have doubled up certain days or accidentally missed a day or two and then had to make up for it. But this year, I set aside the time to do one painting a day. One thing I know about myself and have known about myself for the longest time is that consistent creation 
breeds more joy and it's just something that I desperately need for my mental health, my mental clarity, my, my happiness. It's so good for me and this challenge definitely proved that to me yet again. My other favorite part of this month has been the movement every day and it's been the only other thing that I've not messed up. <laughs> I've gone on walks, I've run, I've played paddle, I've done yoga and Pilates and like I just love the way that I feel currently, feel really good. I also set out to go to bed by 11 p.m. every night, which was difficult to stick to, but I did it pretty well most of the month and that's been hugely beneficial. Moving on, junk food and alcohol. At the beginning of the month, I had it in my head that I just wasn't going to purchase any of this stuff myself and keep it in my house, which I stuck to. But about a week into the challenge, I realized I hadn't drank in seven days. I don't drink that much, it's really only socially. The objective kind of shifted from don't purchase any to just don't have any. And I have really loved being sober the entire month. The last part was clearing out my space and I mean I, I donated a ton of clothes, I got rid of a bunch of old artwork and I feel like it just got the energy moving in my, in my house and I'm very happy about that. So if you're watching this that means it's October 1st and new month, fresh start and there are a couple of things that I'm going to continue to do into the month of October. First is, I'm gonna try to do another 30 days of painting. There's that uh, Maya Angelou quote, the more you use creativity, the more you have. I know that's not verbatim, but it's something along those lines. I just want to exercise that creative muscle more and more and do it consistently on a daily basis. Thank you for watching my 30 paintings in 30 days challenge. I wanna know which painting is your favorite. I think, I think mine is either day two or day eight. I, I had some early favorites, but I'm curious to hear your feedback and let me know if you're setting any goals for yourself for this next month. Again, thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.